All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Mike Cannon from Corp Capital. Uh, welcome uh, to our webinar specifically on the uh, payroll protection loan program. Um, a lot, most people that are on today uh, were probably on our, our first webinar uh, early, earlier this week, uh, just two days ago, um, where we went over uh, a couple of different things. One on the Families First Act in terms of uh, emergency paid sick leave and emergency family medical leave of absence. Um, and we covered uh, a lot of items on the on the CARES Act uh, as well. Um, so some additions uh, to uh, an expansion of the SBA uh, loans as well as um, the payroll protection loan program, which really applies to uh, really all of our clients at Club Capital being an insurance agency owners around the country. And, and we've had uh, a lot of uh, additional um, people that have been able to join other insurance agency owners um, and, and really the payroll protection loan program um, is, is a huge opportunity um, for the small business uh, community across the country, uh, especially all of our uh, clients. Um, and so we wanted to be able to double down uh, on that today um, and dive into um, uh, a little bit more. There's been kind of some changing uh, uh, parameters around the loan over the even just the past couple of days. Um, and we are, uh, we do have a, a guest with us today too. So I'm just, let me just go over a couple of things for the webinar. Um, we'll introduce our guest and then get into a little bit of the content here. Uh, so just again, some 101 on the webinar. Um, we are recording the webinar and we'll be posting uh, the recording of this and send it out to, to everybody that joined and that, were, that signed up um, after today's session. Um, and please encourage you to use the, the chat feature uh, within Zoom for questions. We will be moderating that uh, at the end. We do have a, a frequently asked questions section that we're going to go over. We've been getting a ton of questions over the past couple of days. So we do have a slide for a lot of those that'll probably address uh, some of the key questions that we've been getting. Um, but then definitely feel free to use the chat box and we'll moderate that as well um, and get to those questions at the end. Um, in terms of disclaimer again, uh, you know, really we just need to make sure that this uh, information, you know, does not, you know, is not construed um, uh, to uh, constitute legal device, uh, advice. Um, and said all information is for general, you know, informational purposes only. Um, you know, please, you know, seek uh, really individual guidance, um, uh, either with an attorney or with a CPA, uh, which could be club capital, um, but individually to make sure um, everything is, uh, you're making the right decision um, specific to you uh, and your business. Um, and I do want to do a quick introduction here. We do have the, we have Brett Taxon on the line. He's the executive vice president uh, of Blue Ridge Bank. And we'll talk a little bit more about the partnership between Club Capital and Blue Ridge Bank uh, a little bit later on um, uh, as they're going to be able to, to help Club Capital um, be able to service clients uh, in, in kind of expediting the, the loan process uh, on our side so that we can work directly uh, with the bank here. But Brett, um, thank you for being on the call today and being able to uh, uh, to serve as a sounding board and, and give some uh, some expert advice on this uh, straight from the source. Uh, so maybe just a quick intro on you and the bank. Sure. And, and I, thank you, Micah. Uh, I, so thank you guys for taking the time to chat. First and foremost, hope you guys are healthy and, and uh, your loved ones are safe. Uh, obviously not the uh, the easiest days for, for anybody. Um, and, uh, you know, hence, I think, you know, we, uh, we have the legislation that did, uh, uh, that came through with the CARES Act and, and now doing our best to, to try to understand it and, and get going and, and get folks uh, processed and, and disperse funding. So, you know, clearly that's of interest to, uh, to, to, to you guys here who are, uh, who are, who are joining. Um, you know, a little bit about Blue Ridge Bank. So the, the, the bank is, has been around for a little bit, dates back to the 19th century, based in, in Central Virginia. So really a, a traditional community bank has, has grown quite a bit. Uh, in recent years, although you know, compared to the uh, the money center institutions, you know, we're we're uh, we're, we're still uh, quite small. Um, you know, we are an SBA licensed lender, um, so um, the the provision of the CARES Act, where I think most of the conversation will will, will focus on today, is is of course the the, the PPP section. Um, so um, yeah, I, I imagine you know there there are gonna be a number of questions, and and uh, we have a little more than, than twenty minutes, so. Um, you know, happy to, to give more detail in terms of, of Blue Ridge Bank and, and for many of you, 
Um, hopefully there, there are more conversations to be had. Of course, we, we are a, a national bank and, and always interested in new business, but first and foremost, I think whether it's with Blue Ridge Bank or another institution, you know, really focused on, on getting uh, capital out to, to small businesses like yours. Um, so with that, I want to get into it. Fantastic. Thanks, Brett. Um, so just quickly, uh, agenda for today, um, we're going to give a quick recap for people that maybe weren't on of just uh, a refresher of what the legislation was uh, behind the CARES Act. Um, and then uh, specifically for today's conversation, talk about the pay Paycheck Protection Program. Um, who can apply? Who's eligible for this? Um, how do we calculate the loans? Um, what are the interest rates? Can these be forgiven? Um, and, and how, kind of what is, what is that process or what do at least we know about it so far? Um, and then uh, specifically talking with, uh, with Brett, uh, I think about some of the FAQs um, uh, that, that really we have and that come through the chat today. So that's our main focus uh, for today. So let's kind of get started. Um, so CARES Act, Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, um, uh, so this was what was just passed, you know, probably everybody knows, just last Friday or signed into law last Friday. Um, uh, John, if you'll just go to the next slide here. Um, so two primary things when it comes to the, the uh, small business relief um, uh, part of the act, uh, a ton in, in the act itself outside of that, but specifically for small business um, is the expansion of the SBA's Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Um, and then the introduction of the Paycheck Protection Program. So going over things that we did on, on Wednesday uh, and really looking at our client base specifically, um, while there may be individual cases that, that might, uh, where the expansion of the EIDL, SBA's EIDL program might, might be applicable to them, really for, uh, for the market to which Club Capital works uh, in the insurance agency market, what we see, you know, the Paycheck Protection Program is, is, um, uh, is the most applicable. Um, so this program sets aside $350 billion in government-backed loans um, modeled after the, the SBA 7A loan um, and offering for, forgivable loans up to um, $10 million for companies. This is actually, um, uh, we'll dive into this, but um, uh, into the specifics of, of each company's uh, uh, loan. Um, and then again, small businesses, fewer than 500 employees. Um, and, uh, you know, as we see with uh, you know, with Brett being on the line today, this is being uh, offered in partnership with uh, um, SBA licensed uh, license lenders, uh, financial institutions, um, so outside of the SBA. Um, so moving on to the next one, especially, so it's a payroll protection program. Um, applications begin uh, being accepted April 3rd. So that's why we're having so many webinars and, and informational sessions on this this week. So in terms of timeliness, um, these begin being accepted uh, tomorrow, um, so, which is why we want to cover as much as possible today. So um, as just some quick recap here, um, how does the pay, Paycheck Protection Program work? Um, so these are, uh, the program creates a type of emergency loan that can be forgiven when used to maintain payroll through June 30th. Um, and expands uh, the network beyond SBA so that other banks uh, can actually issue these loans. Um, and the purpose is to incentivize small business owners to not lay off workers and to rehire uh, laid off workers that lost jobs due to COVID-19. So I think through a lot of the questions here are, you know, what is this really used for? How am I going to, um, you know, be able to use this for me? Do I, will this apply to me? Um, I think a lot of uh, the questions that came through um, will be based kind of a lot, along the what the initial purpose of this is is to incentivize small businesses to not lay off workers um, it might not have happened to your business yet um, i do think there's still a lot of uncertainty about the, what what the next couple months hold too um, uh, the maximum loan amount um, here so what what is the maximum loan the maximum loan is 10 million dollars but it's really based upon your average payroll uh, of the last calendar year so it's 2.5 times the average monthly payroll cost for the calendar year prior to the loan. And so your payroll costs here are determined um, by compensation, wages, cash tips, paid time off, pretty much your gross compensation for your, uh, um, for your company's payroll over the last calendar year, and including retirement and health care benefits um, provided by the company. Um, and then the one kind of big caveat there is that any individual compensation um, that is over $100,000 for that calendar year 
uh, could not be used in the calculation. Um, so if somebody was paid $150,000, you know, on payroll in 2019, uh, the total payroll figures for 2019 would need to be reduced by 50,000 um, because no individual can go over the 100,000 mark. Um, interest rates. Uh, so an update from Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday's uh, excuse me, Wednesday's presentation, um, the interest rates have now been capped by the SBA to, to a fixed 0.5%. Um, there's no personal guarantee or collateral um, required, no upfront annual guarantee fees by the lender, um, and the lenders must uh, defer principal and interest for no less than six months, um, but interest will accrue uh, during that period. Um, and then the loans are uh, two-year loans that can be paid early uh, with no prepayment penalties. Um, and so I know we have some frequently asked questions on this as well, um, but I will pause just for a sec for Brett, uh, maybe to interject if there's anything, any updates here, or if I covered all that uh, kind of correctly and some of the highlights. That, that's right. I, I would say that the, the caveat is uh, um, we're expecting additional guidance. So, um, the, the guidance that, that we received and, and the, the information you're providing is, is fantastic and is up to date. But, you know, for example, the, uh, the rate of 0.5% um, is, is quite different than actually what was in the legislation of, of 4%. The, the term is different. Um, so I, I think, you know, the, the features that, that you've laid out here are likely to be the features, but, you know, there are elements that, that, could, uh, that, that could change. I'm sure we'll get into that in terms of, you know, some of the, uh, the calculations, but more in terms of like, how do you uh, verify those calculations and, and what do you as an applicant have to provide? So just want to make it clear that I think, you know, there's a decent chance we get some additional guidance either today or, or tomorrow. Um, so things are just a bit fluid and uh, you want everybody just to take that into account. Yeah, I think it's a great point and just good point for everybody. Uh, you know, as, as much as uh, Club Capital or uh, or Brett here is is trying to answer uh, as many questions as as are fielded at them today, as well as what we've gotten over the past couple of days. Um, so, sometimes it's the best information for that time, uh, and then that information changes the next the next day. So um, a lot that's happening before this gets officially uh, kind of kicked off, and hopefully that is tomorrow that everybody's accepting applications here. Um, but there are some things that are still getting worked out. So we'll answer to the best of our ability, uh, certainly for today. Um, jumping into the next one here, so can these loans uh, be forgiven, which is, uh, you know, obviously one of the huge caveats here. And, and so uh, the answer, yes, um, certainly with limitations here. Um, uh, so small businesses can take these, uh, can take out these loans and can get uh, um, all or a percentage of them forgiven. So generally speaking, as long as the employers maintain uh, paying employees at normal levels by June 30th, uh, really eight weeks after uh, the start of the loan, then the amount uh, they spent on payroll costs, uh, um, fully amount on payroll costs can be forgiven. So this can go up to that 2.5 times because this can also include mortgage interest, rent payments, and utility payments, um, especially that last bullet here. So the government really like the, the criteria from what we've seen is that they're looking to have 75% of the funds that are uh, that are provided be used for payroll costs to have the full value uh, of the loan provided be forgiven. Um, Brett, and I'll just kind of pause on that. Is that in line with uh, with the latest that you've been seeing as well? That's right. Okay, great. Um, so then diving into the frequently asked questions. That's generally the the a quick high level overview um, of what the loan, uh, what the payroll protection program uh, intends to put in place. And so a number of uh, um, you know questions that have come through that I, I think we might just be able to um, to to kind of go down this list. I think initially because these have been a lot of the ones that have come in, and then uh, uh, we'll have John um, be able to read out and maybe moderate some of the questions that are coming through the chat today. Um, so I'll just go down this list with you, Brett, if you don't mind, and then if there's anything sure. additional that, that is kind of popping out to you. Yeah. Um, okay, so first one, as the owner of the business, is my W-2 paycheck from the company included in the PPP loan calculation? So uh, I'm going to answer that, but I'm also just want to reemphasize the uh, disclaimer that you guys uh, put up front. Um, so, you know, for, for all these questions, you're going to want to check um, the, uh, the guidance yourself or, or speak to your accountant uh, or, or counsel or whoever that is. Um, 
So, you know, this is me, you know, just trying to, to, to provide some context, um, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, us being probably more familiar than most, um, you know, being front and center in terms of uh, being at a bank that, that, that's an SBA licensed institution. Um, but, you know, you know for, for some of these questions, um, just don't solely rely on me. Um, so just want to make sure that that's clear as, as an additional disclaimer as, as well, um, you know, beyond what was, uh, was on the slide uh, earlier. So yes, it's pretty clear from the statute, again, with the, the same caveat that, you know, things could shift, right, if there's additional guidance, but, you know, it's pretty clear that, that you would be eligible uh, as the owner of the business to be included in the, in the payroll calculation. Okay. And then this second one, I think I, uh, I think I covered this earlier too. So I'll just reiterate this. So employees that made over a uh, hundred thousand W2 salary, is the salary capped at 100,000 or fully excluded? Um, and so what we've seen in the legislation is just capped, not excluded. So you'd, you'd run the full payroll report, see if anybody made over a uh, hundred thousand um, for that year. Um, and then back the anything out, uh, the salaries out that were over 100,000 for that employee, um, which I think primarily in, in, in the businesses that we, that, you know, we work in, um, this would primarily come into effect if the, the owner of the business is on, uh, is on payroll themselves. Um, not a lot of the, the employees would necessarily be making that within the industry that we serve. Uh, but I think we really need to, and certainly Club Capital, when looking at reports, really be looking at, at that um, uh, for each uh, person uh, on payroll. But it will sp specifically um, be probably the, the owner of the business that might exceed that. Um, so just going to the next one, as a sole proprietor not on payroll of my business, are earnings from net income of the business able to be part of the PPP loan calculation? Is this something that that um, you're aware about, Brett? I have not seen that that come up before. Um, certainly, sole proprietors are, are eligible. Um, 1099s are, are eligible, um, but but I haven't seen in terms of the specific question, you know, with regard to the uh, the, the earnings from from that income. I I would think right uh, <laughs> again with the caveat I gave before. Um, that, that that would be treated as uh, as, as payroll, um, but you, you're going to want to check with somebody, right? The, so, okay. so pay, pay, payroll, um, at, at least in the statute, is broadly defined. Um, I, my sense is I have not seen any particular guidance on on that specific question, um, but you know, so you're going to want to check. But but my instinct is that that could be included. Okay. Yeah, I think we've seen a little bit that it, that is. Um, uh, shown that it will need to be um, uh, uh, put into calculation. So you will be, able, I believe, sole proprietors. So, you know, our sole proprietors that, that run businesses might not be on payroll, uh, right? So um, so then we need to be able to take their net income at the end of it, net income for the business at the end of the year. So I believe that that's how it might uh, work from what we've been seeing so far. So um, for everybody on the line, we'll, be, we'll make sure to check on that afterwards and provide some guidance. Um, and as for the last one, if I'm a new business that wasn't open in 2019, and I can just share some guidance here right, that I saw earlier is, is um, you know, generally what they're looking for to be able to calculate the 2.5x uh, average monthly payroll. Um, if you were in business uh, last year using 2019's total payroll uh, and uh, divided by, by 12 and times it by 2.5, if you were not, we'd be looking at utilizing January through February, uh, January through February reports of 2020. Yeah, hey, Mike, uh, you just want to point out that uh, applicants have the choice of the, the period they want to use, right? So it's, it's Q2, the average of Q2 2019, or the last 12 months. But then uh, exactly what you specified, if you weren't open in, in during the, the period of, of Q2 2019, you would then use uh, January and February of this year. So it's either the average of Q2 or all of 2019. Is that just looking at kind of whatever benefits you most or? Uh, you can elect. Yeah, I think that's how people would think about yeah. it. Okay. Again, but just to be clear, it's, it's the average of the last 12 months uh, from the point of application, um, not 2019. Last 12 months, not, okay. From the start of the application, got it. Okay, very good. Um, 
And then I think some of the, these next two uh, two questions, um, Brett, I think go into uh, a number of people seeing this as as a tremendous opportunity, but but with the pause of, uh, you know, wait, what is this? What is this used for? What if I, you know, currently right now I haven't seen, you know, a, a dramatic loss of revenue in my business? Is this still something that uh, I can apply for? And is this still something I can uh, uh, I can r request uh, really a grant to cover. Um, so if I if I don't for, if I don't see for see needing necessarily funds for this right now, should I be applying? Um, and what's kind of the criteria for that? I think people are just a little bit uh, wary of you know what should what do I need to really meet to be able to do this? Uh, you know we're not retail businesses, right? We're not necessarily yeah. shutting down right now, but should I be applying to this? Yeah, so, so that, that's a great question. So um, at least what we, again, with the same caveat that, that it's a bit fluid in terms of, you know, where the, the guidance ultimately lands um, or potentially even evolves right after tomorrow, which, which can happen too. But I think you'd be grandfathering if, if you applied before. Um, you know, what we're, what we're expecting is essentially a self-certification that, that you've been adversely impacted by COVID-19. Right. So it's not narrowly defined. It doesn't seem to require any documentation of that. But you are self certifying, you're attesting to the fact that you've been essentially been adversely impacted. Um, you, that's up to the discretion of, of the applicant what, what that means and, and if they wanted to move forward or not, and, and if they think that the, uh, the program makes sense to them. Right. Absolutely. And then the, the last question here. Um, is any insight on loan forgiveness? So we've talked a lot about applying for the loan um, and there's, uh, I, I, I think that's probably the primary focus right now um, of, of just ironing that process out. But what can you tell us about, okay, you know, somebody, uh, you know, our, our business owners are able to apply for this loan, they get the loan. What do we know anything about the process for applying and, and what criteria you have to um, be able to provide or any supporting documentation? Um, again, it's it's a bit fluid. I think you know we've taken the approach at, at the bank of probably being overly conservative and um, you know basing expectations on the legacy SBA 7A uh, loan processes and what's required for those. Um, you know, when the guidance came out uh, on, on Tuesday afternoon and, and the, the first sample application form was, was released, it is really streamlined, right? It, it is largely self-certification, all right, although there is going to be some verification requirement. Um, we have not gotten certainty in terms of what actually that's going to entail on, on us as an institution um, to, um, to, to, to check, right, um, the... Uh, uh, the inputs that an applicant is, is providing, nor is it fully clear what it will be, you know, eight weeks after receiving the loans, which is when the, uh, the calculation for loan forgiveness would, would, would occur. Um, I think we have some sense of that, right? And, and we would think that you'd be, want to be prepared to be able to have documentation that shows your payroll and then also to sub-segment, you know, those, uh, those employees who are making more than $100,000. Um, and then on the uh, the loan forgiveness piece, there there, there is some some language in in the statute and the guidance that, that covers that, right? So, um, uh, seventy five percent of the loan forgiveness is, is based on on payroll, and then there's twenty five percent that additionally can include, for example, rent or the interest on uh, on your mortgage or other debt obligations. Um, utility payments are included in that as well. Got it. Got it. Um, but I, I would be prepared okay. to, to, to be able to, to have those documents um, and to be able to share those with, with your lender. Um, I, I think, again, we'll get some clarity in terms of what exactly is going to be expected. But um, it, it doesn't seem as though it would be an overly burdensome lift to have those document, that documentation at hand and, and to be able to provide it um, you know, at the point of, uh, of eight weeks following receipt of the, the funding. Right, right. Okay, so looking at eight weeks is when the pro the timeline would be to to be able to have supporting documents for that and requests for the loan forgiveness. That's at least that's what we're that, looking at right now. That that's what's in the statute, so we would expect got that it. to be the case. Yep, got it. Okay, so um, I know we've only got a couple minutes left. John, can you um, maybe try and highlight some of the main questions that are coming through um, uh, for us today? 
Yeah, sure. We've got a, an agent that incorporated his, his agency on March 1st, 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, he was a sole proprietor for a number of years. Um, do we know if is that an issue in, in qualifying for the SBA loan? Um, so, so the language says that an applicant um, uh, would have had to be in business as of March 15th, so he would seem to be covered. Uh, we've got a, an agent here that, that missed the first answer to the first bullet on this frequently asked question page, Mike, if, if you wouldn't mind answering that again. I'm sorry, say that again, John? We've got an agent that missed your answer to the first bullet here as an owner of a business. Is, 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 are the owner's W-2 paycheck wages from the company? Yes, included in yes, that, that is, yes. You, uh, yep, you are an employee of the company. Um, so at this point, yes, uh, you know, the, the guidance is that your paycheck would be a part of it. So when we, you know, from, for all of our clients on the line, we use, uh, you know, Gusto for payroll. Um, but if you, you know, any payroll system that you're using, you're going to be really looking at a payroll journal report um, for the, the last 12 months um, and looking at that total gross salary uh, that's there. Um, a couple of caveats with, with some additions um, there, but that's what, what Club Capital can help with. So one agent asks, what documents do we need to apply for the loan? So, so, so that, that's what I was getting at uh, before. So there are going to be some form documents. Um, you know, the, uh, the SBA has already, uh, uh, has already listed what, what we anticipate to be the actual application document. Um, you know, additionally, I think there'll be some final documentation that, that includes, um, you know, potentially some additional self-certifications. Um, and then um, at least as we are prepared, Preparing for right now, um, you know, essentially to include documentation that supports, say, the uh, uh, the front end calculation for the amount of funding to which you'd be entitled. Yep, and so just to add to that, from what I've seen on the application, to uh, um, if you are uh, also on either the owner or part of the management team uh, in other businesses, I, I do believe you have to be able to state um, what those businesses are uh, in an addendum. Um, so something that we're working on and putting a template together for for an addendum for that, um, yeah, as well as yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say some. There, there's going to be nuance based upon the individual uh, particular circumstances, right? For example, um, there there's affiliation rules, right, and and ownership rules that may be tripped if if um, the ownership is is 20% or more in in a business. Right, so there's going to be some some added uh, verification uh, around you know, issues that, that may or may not be applicable. Um, but again, you're going to want to be able to to think about it for your individual circumstances. You know, the answers I'm giving are, are you know intended to be broad in nature. Right. Yep. And maybe we'll just grab maybe a couple more questions here, John. Sure. Uh, one agent wants to know: are, are any personal guarantees required, or any collateral required? No. No collateral nor any personal guarantee. Are there credit requirements for the loan? Nope. Who else you guys got? Come on. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is jumping the gun, Micah, but um, question about Club Capital helping out with the loan application process. Do we want to field, field that now? Yeah, I mean, why don't you just pull up the next slide? I mean, what, what, or, or you want to hey, talk about that? Right? Hey guys, I got to hop in, in like, in two minutes. I don't know if there are any questions for me, Additioner, if there's anything else I can, can do to round out the conversation. Yeah, any, any, uh, um, uh, I guess just kind of final thoughts to, uh, as, uh, in terms of, um, uh, I guess speediness of this. I mean, pretty much we're going to have a host of, uh, you know, the majority of small businesses uh, around the country really uh, probably looking at this and trying to apply for this. Um, any any thoughts that you have in terms of uh, what it looks like in terms of turnaround? Uh, you know, if people are interested in this and trying to get their applications in yeah. uh, as soon as they can. Any any thoughts on turnaround for this? And yeah, look, I, I think, you know, we've been as an institution, I think, you know, 
comparatively ahead of this, you know, probably for a variety of reasons, you know, one, we have the SBA license, you know, two, I think, you know, for a lot of our long-term customers, you know, as is the case everywhere, um, we, we want them to, to get some support and, and for, for that to happen yesterday. Um, so, you know, we've built uh, our processes in place that, that, you know, intend to be able to move as, as quickly as possible. Um, so our application link is, is already up and I know that, uh, that David and Mike, you, you have that and, and of course, you know, feel free to, to share that with others. Um, you know, the, the one thing is like we can control what we can control and, and there are certain elements here uh, that we cannot, right? So, um, you know, we're, we're awaiting um, what we think will be final guidance from, from the government. There's an element because this is an SBA loan. Um, we didn't really go into the guarantee, but but historically, there's a robust secondary market for the guaranteed portions of uh, SBA 7A lending. Um, so we actually have to certify every loan that, that's made, and, and the government has to be able to track, um, you know, where that guarantee is going. In this case, it's 100% guaranteed throughout, which is why we don't have as stringent of, of underwriting requirements as is typical within uh, the, the SBA lending program. Um, so you know, for that process, you know. We just want to, you know, folks to keep to keep in mind that you know that that element is going through the government, right? That that is um, that has to happen um, for for every financial institution that's participating in this program. Uh, you know, we've heard anecdotally there have been some issues with the disaster loan program, which you had mentioned at the outset when, in one of your first slides. Um, you know, where that program is entirely run through the SBA, um, that they've had some some issues with with the site going down and and with with latency. Um, you know, we've heard anecdotally, that, at least as regards for, for what's called uh, ETRAN, which is the certification I was referring to, um, that that's migrating to AWS, uh, Amazon. So, um, you know, hopefully that could alleviate some of these concerns. Now, this is just a long way of, of saying that we're trying to, to move as quickly as we can. We know for a lot of businesses, um, you know, time is of the essence. There isn't necessarily a, a ton of cash that, that, that's at hand. Um, and, you know, strategic and, and employment decisions are being made in real time. So we are gonna do the best we can and, and try to make it as, uh, as quick a process as is possible, but they're just certain elements that, that are beyond our control. Totally understandable. Um, well, Brett, I appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining us. Um, yes. I'll give some overviews of, of how we're gonna be able to work together um, to help streamline this uh, um, later in the presentation here for everybody, but I appreciate you being on. Well, thank you guys for having me again, you know, hopefully everybody is healthy and, and staying safe and uh, look forward to working with, uh, with some of you. Thank you. Everybody. All right. Thanks, Brett. Yep. Yeah, take care. All right, John, if you'll move to the next slide, just for everybody that's still here, um, really to answer the question of how we uh, intend to be able to help um, with this. So first of all, you can work with, uh, uh, you know, any bank. Um, that is SBA approved and is, that is offering these, the, um, they will have the application there. It's generally a standard um, application process. The fees should be, uh, there are standard, uh, um, uh, pretty much no fees uh, for anybody uh, across the country for this um, to any applicant. So how can Club Capital help? Um, what we want to be able to do for uh, first and foremost for all of our clients and then for anybody else that needs some help here uh, is to help streamline the process. So we, we've done is partnered with Blue Ridge Bank um, uh, to streamline the process uh, for as many agents as we can. Um, so we're gonna help fill out the loan application um, for all of our clients. This will be you know, incredibly easy on our side because we, uh, we have uh, probably 98% of the information that, that we need um, for that um, provides us supporting documentation. That's everything that we need. Um, answer any questions that, that you have about this. Um, and then we can submit the application directly to, to Blue Ridge Bank um, on your behalf. Um, so you know, some process there that, that we'll be putting together uh, and working with you. Um, but this is fully complimentary uh, from Club Capital. So in terms of how we can help, this is what we intend to be able to do uh, for everybody. If, any, if you know there are people that are not our clients that need some help, um, uh, we are certainly willing to help. There's going to be a, some more information that we need um, from you on that side because we don't have your payroll reports or, or things like that. Um, but uh, any of our clients that do want to go to their, their own bank and, and get this done, you're, you're more than welcome. Um, I think the biggest thing right now is that all banks across the country are going to be uh, incredibly overloaded um, with the amount of work that, that's coming their way, with the amount of uh, small businesses that are looking to um, uh, 
uh, to get some financial assistance through these times. So um, that is our kind of promise to you. Um, and then, uh, John, we'll just kind of end on some next steps here. Um, so just after this uh, um, presentation, uh, we will send uh, an online sign-up form um, that allows you to sign up to have Club Capital perform these services for you. So if you want us to help you, um, just uh, you'll just need to sign up so that we have you on our uh, on our list. Um, if you have any questions, support at Club Capital is always there for you. Um, but we just need to pretty much get a list of who wants us to be able to help them. Um, and we will uh, go from there. We'll get to you, uh, get to you as soon as we can, um, schedule some time to talk, go over the application, make sure that we have things uh, right, um, and then be able to help just streamline this for you. Okay, so in terms of documents that you need, for most of our clients, we have uh, um, really most of what we need. Um, the only thing that we would say here is that if Gusto is not managing your benefits for 2019, um, or just in general, if they have not been, um, we need to know the full amounts of employer-sponsored uh, health and retirement benefits. Um, so we just want to make sure that we can put that into the calculation, um, you know, if you want to apply. Um, and then for, uh, there'll be kind of a longer list for, for anybody that is not a current client of ours um, that we don't have information for. Um, and so we'll reach out specifically uh, with, with some additional requests there for certain types of reports. Um, we are past time today. Uh, uh, I will try and get to as many of the questions as possible. We're going to uh, sift through the uh, the questions afterwards and get uh, get some responses to those um, in the frequently asked questions page. Um, we did send out the the landing page um, with the webinar the other day that has frequently asked questions on it. We're going to keep updating that uh, as well, um, and you should be able to uh, directly on our website on club.capital. Uh, there is a banner at the top for our uh, COVID-19 Resource Center that has access to that webinar page um, from the other day. Um, so that's where you can um, try and go to to find out more information. Um, and then we'll be putting the sign-up form there as well. Um, but we'll send the sign-up form out via email uh, too. Um, I want to thank everybody for, for tuning in uh, again today to learn a little bit more. Um, I know there are a ton of questions. Um, I'm glad we were able to get to as many of them as we could today. Um, I know there are a lot more. Um, uh, I would just ask to, uh, to <laughs> certainly bear with us uh, over the next couple of days um, uh, and weeks probably as we try and uh, work with everybody, but you should be able to get a, a response from us uh, relatively quickly that um, we will be working with you um, and here's a couple of things that we need and just set up some time with us. All right, everybody. Well, thank you again for joining um, and more to hear from us uh, uh, later today. Um, and if there's any additional kind of massive changes um, that we need to go over, we'll either send out some notifications via email, uh, social media, um, or look to host another webinar should we need to. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.